yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. And welcome and welcome back to another worthless mutts. And finally, we are back again. Finally, we are back with episode uh, 17 of Dog Nuttery in Canada. Finally. It's, you know, this is like the the main event. Uh, being able to do Dog Nuttery in Canada is like the main event. This is, you know, my country where I get to, uh, you know, shine that light on the Dog Nuttery that goes on this, goes on in this country. And just like any other country, uh, dog nuttery is alive and well. It may not be as bad as other countries or cities, uh, but it's alive and well. And just like in other countries, again, like a lot of dog nutters, they ignore a lot of people. They ignore how dangerous and reckless these dogs are, how reckless these dog owners are. Uh, so just today, just today, I, I seen this dog nut. I seen this dog nut walking, uh, it was like a little bit of a busy street, walking his dog, this big dog without a leash. Lucky enough, I, I was on the other side of the road, and uh, lucky enough, no one got hurt. But again, that's the type of dog nuttery that exists in this country where people walk their big worthless mutts without a leash. And that's actually the second time uh, that I've seen it within maybe the last two months of dog nutters with their big worthless mutt i'm talking these dogs are big they may or may not be bully breeds but they're pretty big and these dog nuts are walking them walking with them walking in front of them behind them without a leash the first time i seen it uh the guy was walking in front of the dog without a leash so the guy's looking forward. He doesn't know what's happening behind him. He doesn't know if the dog took off or whatnot. The guy's walking in front of the dog without a leash where anything could happen in that second. And if he can't see what happens, uh, he, he's going to you know have a story to tell. But anyways, great to be back. Dog Nuttery in Canada, episode 17, calling this one Oh Dog Nuttery. Uh, I don't have, you know, I would say, um, top notch, uh, stories, uh, to go over, but there's still, uh, a lot of things that needs to be, um, gone over, uh, pertaining to the dog nuttery in Canada. But before we do that, before we do that is... Movie time! Yay! This is like a a world 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 premiere. It's a world premiere. Another video that I have uh, made and produced. Uh, but before we begin, all pictures and songs and music, etc., etc., they all belong to their rightful owners. I do not own any of it. Um, just using this, uh, not making a dime from uh, this channel or from this show. Uh, uh, so again, I don't own any of the content, but you know, um, I was able to produce a, a, a nether um, movie video. What this one is about is, um, as children, uh, we are introduced to a lot of folklore, fairy tales of of you know scary monsters whether they're you know in a book or not or your parents tell you about it your friends tell you about it just to be good uh, we learn about these scary monsters that may or may not exist we read about them in stories and um, what this video is is you know is, I don't, I don't want to give it away but what it's about is, is, is it's telling us that there's something far worse 
than the, the, the monsters you read about in these stories. So without further ado, uh, without further ado, hope you can see the full screen on this. Um, so the volume may be up and down a little bit in this video. Um, but again, I hope you enjoy the video. Hope you learned something from it. But nevertheless, it's, over, it's only a seven minute long video. But nevertheless, here we the go. The following content might be disturbing, creepy for you. So that means you might not want to stick around and watch it. So, yeah. You might think you thought the monsters under your bed were mean. They are the watered down ones, the ones that were made up centuries ago. They made them sound playful and corny. Yes, it's awfully phony. The twisted fictions, the sick intentions for you to be good for goodness sakes. Well, gather round children, zip it, listen. It steals naughty children that don't listen, snatches you away while parents sit at bay. They can only say, I told you so, you'll be screaming sorry while there is no way home. <laughs> You've heard stories about not looking under the bed while you'll be fed to the boogeyman. He'll grab your hand and pull you into the abyss where you'll... <laughs> How about the big bad wolf? It will puff and huff to blow your house down. All what you have will collapse to the ground. Wolf will pretend to be granny to eat your tiny body. It will get you close. You won't run or resist. Before you realize you'll be consumed with terror and fear. You'll run but get inserted into the tum. <laughs> Yum! Mm. Are you hungry? You could turn into ginger and sweets. You don't want to be eaten down. You run and you run till you come to a lake. And it's the only way to get away. Only way past is on a beast. It talks well, dresses well, you feel it can help. Your aid becomes what you feared. You were unprepared and scared. What you left behind catches up with you in just little time wasted. Hmm. You've been tasted. Fact or fiction, a place unknown, no one to phone. Land different, suddenly dependent on yourself to find your way back home. Because you're alone, you're lost, impatient with no direction. Only way is to seek a wizard while a witch torments you, while a fairy is misleading. <laughs> What's way worse than being stolen, frightened, trapped and lost? That's simple. Listen, the boogeyman is defeated. Crumpus is deleted. The big bad wolf is deflected. Fox outsmarted. World unknown is conquered. Fear, anxiety, insecurity, loss, stress, displacement. I give no warning, though I am sent to comfort you. I am loved, I am adored. You are given to me, 
placed on a platter, no bib for the blood splatter. You are given to me to be ripped apart. You are placed on me to be devoured. I'll end your life or change it forever. Nothing can stop me. No forewarning, no experience, no instincts. No parent can stop the shake. No gate can contain me. No chain on my neck while I'm on your fate. If you live through the horror, you still be living in a void of fear, anxiety, insecurity, loss, stress, displacement. Your life that you know of belongs to me. With or without me being near or there, you look under your bed, you don't see the boogeyman. When you close your eyes, you see me. Look in the mirror, you see the horror that I have given to you. If you live through the carnage, you will know what it's like to live at a loss. You will feel desperate to look away at what's left of you. You fail, nevertheless. It's traumatizing. It turns your heart and spirit to jelly. I ask you, to what end? You will dread yourself, but can't run from it. Your dismantlement arrives all the same. You avoid the mirror to settle for your shadow. Yet you still see the scars that I placed on your life. I am. I am. I am worse than the fact and fiction. I will just snatch you. I will rip you apart. No wolf, no boogeyman, no thief, no place can do what I do. For I am real. This is real. I am your end. If I'm not your end. Whatever I left on you, whatever I left in you, I'll be living with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> yep. So yeah, um, um, I, um, I like it, um, well the only reason why I made it as gory as possible, I, I want to make it as gory as possible, I want to you know, do more than what I presented, um, that's because um, I want to show the, the realism, as, as much as I can, I want to show the realism of dog culture, and compare dog culture to fairy tales uh, dog culture the monsters in dog culture are far worse than the ones in fairy tales and that's because the ones in fairy tales they don't exist they never have existed I'm, I'm sure people may have died in the name of fairy tales for whatever reason but dogs are by far the worst monsters the worst villains the worst creatures ever uh, many of these stories that you hear about, uh, depending on the version, like uh, th th it's not as uh, gory like in real life with these dogs. Because in real life, these dogs are are mauling infants, babies. You don't necessarily hear about that in in, in fairy tales. In real life, these dogs are killing babies, and. You know, various governments, especially in Canada, it's like it's they're fine with that. They are fine with that. Uh, I'm I'm not sure how this came to my mind. I don't know. I was thinking of ferrets, and then I was you know searching something up with ferrets, and then I re and I found out that it's illegal. I found out that it's a uh, it's illegal to own uh, pet ferrets in in, in Canada. And guess why? That's due to uh, the potential attacks on people. So it's illegal to own ferrets because the potential attacks on people. Whereas with dogs, 
every day, every day, you, you know, there are attacks ag against children, against adults. Every day, them killing their owners. But yet, those things, even though we know and we see that, hey, these things are dangerous, no matter how much you train it, no matter how much you love it, no how much matter you care for it, no matter how much you're a good person, these things, you know, are, are far more dangerous, aggressive, than ferrets. And, and you know, I should, I just, it's, it's period. It's like end of story. I even searched for um, ferret attack stats and I got nothing. I got no stats, nothing. I got no attack stats on ferret attacks, but yet ferrets are illegal. Dogs have plenty of stats and facts proving that they're dangerous, but yet they're allowed. But apparently the ferrets are not allowed in Canada. It's, it's such a, a weird government, weird country, weird loss. Where you clearly have something as deadly as the dog. That's allowed to remain in our, our society. But something that is, you know, mildly, you know, harmless. Is illegal. Like we've never heard of ferrets mauling infants. Never heard of ferrets mauling their owners to death. We hear about this, these attacks when it's about dog. It's like always dogs. Always there's exception. Other animals do attack people. And, you know, some of these people do adopt wild animals and those wild animals do attack them. Uh, but when you look at the stats and you take into the consideration of the hype, the lies and the excuses for dogs, it's, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable um, to see where dogs are. Something that is, that is labeled as man's best friend, harmless, and they're hyped up as perfect good, they can't do any harm, you know, it's not the dog's fault, but yet they continue to attack and terrorize people every day around the country, around the world. This is a around the world thing with dogs. I'm on Reddit. No, I'm going a little off topic, but I'm on Reddit and there's a lot of attacks going on in Brazil. A lot of pit bulls attacking their owners in Brazil. A lot of pit bulls attacking children in Brazil. And I, and I've I've gone over many countries of attacks. I I've talked about Jamaica. I've talked about the UK, Ireland, the USA, India, other places in Asia, Australia, all over the world. First Nations. <laughs> everywhere you go, man, everywhere the dog is, you know, something is, is, is going wrong. Something is going wrong. Again, no attack stats on ferrets. But yet, those are, those are illegal, but even though there's a ban on pit bulls in, in Canada or in America, in, uh, in Ontario, they're still allowed to own these things. And again, I've I've seen these pit bulls in my bare two my two clear eyes. I've seen them numerous times, and this, this, this man is pretty much useless. Uh, it's gonna go briefly over, uh, you know, Canada dog bite stats in 2024. Over uh, there's over 500,000 dog bites annually in Canada. Um, you're twice as likely to be bitten by a dog in a city than in a country. Uh, it is estimated that there are one or two fatalities in Canada from dog attacks yearly. Dog nutters looking at this will say, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Again, they will use anything to, to justify to protect dogs. That's what they do. Uh, one death, two deaths, that's, that's far too much. Uh, a bite, attack, growling at people, far too much. We, we need to get that down to zero. And the only way to get that down to zero is to eliminate these dogs. Um, younger Canadians are likely to, likelier to fall on the bad owner side. 
and uh, 67% of Canadians support muzzling breeds considered dangerous. Uh, the, the second one is, we're about to touch base on this, is about 500 Canada Post workers are bitten every year. So just in the U.S., uh, they had a week of, of dog bite awareness, which is pretty wasteful because, again, they, they're, you know, they're, they, they, really, they really didn't do anything. Like, they really did not uh, do anything. They didn't come up with any solutions. Um, they want dogs to remain in the communities. So if dogs are going to remain in the communities, then someone eventually, again, are going to continue to get bitten over and over and over. Uh, so their solutions are, are nonsense. Their solution is that the, the, the postal worker has to put their trust in the dog owner. These same dog owners that say dogs are better than people, that don't like people, that hate people, that put the dogs above people. Now, this person has to put their whole lives in the hands of these dog owners. And there have been many cases of delivery drivers, any delivery driver, getting attacked and killed by dogs just just by delivering uh, delivering product. Either they've died or they've been attacked. The owner did nothing. So it's... it's you know this dog bite awareness stuff. If you're not, if they're not gonna say the what they need, what yeah, if they're not gonna say what needs to be said, then it's pretty much worthless. Um, dog bite awareness. This is for the Canada Post. Uh, however, okay, every day in Canada there are millions of interactions between dogs and people, and most of them are positive. Okay, on the get go, again, they're trying to protect these worthless ones. This is what they always do. Maybe not in the same exact word, but they always, you know, you know, try to, you know, big up or hype up dogs or support dogs, either slickly or very direct. Again, however, or 500 dog bites incidents to Canada Post delivery personnel each year. Uh, dogs that are properly trained, socialized, and kept under control are less likely to bite. Uh, how many times have we seen dogs in a state where it, it doesn't look like they're going to attack or bite? And they do. Um, I'm not going to show it today. Maybe I might. I may not later. There's this video of uh, of this owner on her property. She has her dog, a non-bully breed. And then there's a bully breed dog, a pit bull, that comes onto her property. The dog is at a state where you can tell that it's not, it's not in attack mode. It's not anxious. It's, it's not frightened. It's not stressed out. It doesn't seem like this thing would ever attack. So the, the dog nut owner allows her dog to pretty much interact with the pit bull. And the owner st st stood there just watching, watching for maybe a minute, just watching. And, and that pit bull looked as if it wasn't going to attack. But Liddy, did you know, you know, a minute later, seconds later, that pit bull started attacking her dog. And as the thing was attacking her dog, she struggled. She struggled to 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 get that pit bull off of her dog. Um, so again, you know, dogs that are trained or socialized, it, it really doesn't matter because all it takes is that one moment. That one moment. They can be trained for a good two years. And two years later, that an incident happens. It just takes that one moment. And we've heard from these dog nuts every single time their dog attacks is, is that their dog has never been aggressive before. The dog has never bitten before. I raised it from a puppy. So if you can, if a thing has never shown aggression before, then all of a sudden it does show aggression. All that training and socialization and loving nonsense is totally irrelevant. And, and it's funny how, and it's funny how, again, these postal workers are, are getting attacked by dogs, but they're going to use dogs. They're going to use dogs in, in a, i say, a positive sense on their little ads or articles. It doesn't make any sense. Um... I can't really avoid looking at this ugly thing, this creepy dog, but did you know having your pet spayed or neutered can de decrease, de decrease aggression? 
So basically, when their junk's attached to them, they are naturally aggressive. If they were not naturally aggressive, why do they have to cut off their junk and do all that stuff they have to do? Because they, they're basically telling us right here that when they have their stuff on, they're aggressive. They become aggressive. So you don't want that aggression, so you cut off their junk. So they're naturally aggressive. A trained and socialized dog is better is a better behaved dog. But again, like I said, all it takes is that one moment, that one day, that one second. And all that training and socialization that you did for two years, a year, it means nothing. Because oftentimes when a dog finally snaps, either the victim is killed, the victim is in a state where they cannot function normally anymore, and the dog gets put down. So all it takes is that one moment. One moment. And they also add, lastly, with your help, we can make our community safer, a safer place and reduce the number of dog bites. And the only way to make the community safer is to get rid of these dogs. We cannot keep putting our trust and, uh, you know, hoping that these dog owners will have a well-socialized dog that won't attack. Gotta stop doing that because, again, all it takes is that one moment and... One moment, that one time, and and it's 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 done. You, you, the hug's done. You're dead. You've been attacked. Uh, Canada Post asks residents in Waterloo Region to keep dogs away from their carriers. Uh, they add many of these households have dogs, and our delivery agents encounter them every day while delivering mail and parcels. Said the release. Our top priority is safety of our employees. These people want safety, but they still want dogs to exist, exist in our community. You can't have both. Doesn't work like that. It has never worked like that. It doesn't work like that. Uh, again, which includes safe access to mailboxes and the front door. We've all been there. Even if you're not a mail carrier, you knock on the door and you hear a dog, chances are you're getting you're nervous. You're trembling. Because a lot of dog lovers too, you know, they, they knock on someone's door or they get attacked by their dog. So it means nothing if you're a dog nut or a dog lover. It means absolutely nothing. Uh, so basically, yeah, they're, they're, they're basically pleading to dog owners to, to keep our employees safe. We beg of you dog owners keep or your dogs away from the door you know you can have your dog but just stop biting us it's like they're begging begging to you know begging these dog owners and these dog nuts reading this or whatever they look at it like whatever i'm they're like whatever like i do what i want that's that's, that's dog owners they, they, i do what i want my dog is well trained my dog's not gonna bite my dog's not gonna attack even when they know the dog is aggressive and will attack, they, they will say my dog is not going to attack. That, that's how, you know, crazy it is to... Um, crazy it is to, to put, our lives in our, put our lives in the hands of these dog owners. Um, 10 Canadian service dog and pet therapy stats to know in 2024. Uh, first one is service dog takes at least 18 months. Training a service dog takes at least 18 months. And by that time, you should be cured of your whatever you have, you know. By that time, you should be working on yourself. But no, you, you, you need a worthless mutt to, 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 go, to, the, to, the, go, to the, go to the mailbox. You know, worth as much to eat. You know, worth as much to buy gum. Some of you will just go in the store with your worthless mutt. Say it's a service dog just so you can buy gum. Around 30 to 70% of dogs from dedicated organizations make it as a service dogs in Canada. Uh, the annual cost of these things range from 500 to 10,000. Um, service dogs have the same broad access rights as Canadian citizens, which, 
which is ridiculous. Uh, transportation service providers must accommodate those who travel with service dogs in Canada. Uh, I think that also goes with like some Uber drivers or Lyft or etc. Uh, you have to allow this this dog nut and their service dog in your car, which may or may not be a service dog, which this person may or may not have some kind of illness, you know. Um, but you probably have to allow them in your car. You have to allow the dog on your seats. You have to allow the dog to stink up your car. Just so this dog nutter can 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 just make a fool out of out of out of themselves. Fifty uh, percent of people with service dog dogs have experienced dis discrimination in public. I think that's because a lot of you dog nuts you you use fake service dogs, fake emotional support dog. What do you want to call these things? And that you know you know it it, it gives a, a bad rep. To other people that, <laughs> to other you know dogs that actually may need a service dog, <laughs> you know, and then you know that that that's what happens in dog culture, such a reckless culture, and and that's what happens. Um, they say that veterans with PTSD should have service dogs. Okay, uh, many of them have done very well without these things for for hundreds of years. Done so without a worthless mind. Like again, it's not necessary. Um, animal assisted therapy can improve people's mental health. In Canada, over ten registered pet therapy agencies are legally able to, tr to perform an animal assisted therapy. Pet therapy can have a positive effect on patients' well-being, which I think is bogus. I think it's highly bogus. Uh, the dogs don't do anything. I think that's it's all in. It's like the the. Um, it's like the. Uh, I think it's like the um, placebo effect. Um, that's where um, it's triggered by a person's belief in the benefit from the treatment and their expectations of feeling better rather than the characteristics of the placebo. I think that's what it is. Uh, again, majority of things that they hear about dogs or service dogs is all the positive. Positive, positive, positive. You, you go to YouTube, you see videos of people with service dogs. They're all happy and they're all jolly and, you know, everyone's having a good time and et cetera, et cetera. Instagram, same thing. People make videos with their service dogs and everyone likes it. They get attention. And you as dog nuts, you want that attention. You want that attention from the dog and from other people. So you go on and get a service dog and whether or not you may or may not need it, you get it and you feel happy with it. Um, the dog, again, isn't doing anything. Dog is just walking and, and looking dumb as always, but it's that placebo effect where they say the dogs can do, these service dogs can do this and do that and, and you think it can do that when it doesn't do anything. So you 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 feel like in your in your mind or in your head that it actually is doing something. So you feel good in that moment or for that time, whatever. So yeah, I think a lot of service dogs, little support dogs, is all you know roughly or reflects the the placebo effect um toronto i think in this article that caught my attention is um is that you know they state that and they know that dogs are dangerous they have a dangerous axe or you know dogs are, are going to get involved in dangerous acts. They have rules, they have laws, they have all this equipment stuff, etc. So they know that these things are dangerous. They know that they're dangerous. So they add all these, um, you know, precautions of, you know, how to keep your dog, you know, from not attacking or etc. But these things, these dogs... Or it's a pit bull, German Shepherd, etc. They're still allowed in our cities, but apparently, ferrets are illegal. Um, say ferrets illegal 
in say Ontario. Let's see if they're actually legal in Ontario. Um, this example of prohibited mammals. Um, so basically, here in Ontario or Toronto, at least, all these animals here you are not allowed to own. Not allowed to own any of these ones. Um, um, let's see. Um, see, you can't own. You can own the, the domesticated ferrets, I guess. But all the other ones, again, you can't own them. They have rules and regulation on 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 the the length of of a, of a reptile. Um, you know, the venomous and poisonous animals. You can't do that. You can't own leopards, tigers, etc. But with all the facts and the resources that we know about these dogs, where you have to create these laws. We well, have to create these laws. Um, we have to create these laws. Uh, it, it's just weird. <laughs> it's just weird that even if the dog is dangerous, has attacked someone, they're still allowed to exist in our society. But uh, again, um, where is it? These other animals are not allowed. You can't, you're, not, you're not allowed to own them. You're not allowed to own them. Whether or not they will be dangerous or not is, is you know, um, is up to a debate. Can't own pigs, sheep, goats, or cattle. Pigs? You can't own a pig? Can't own a sheep. When, when has a sheep or pig hurt anyone? But you're allowed to own these dangerous, worthless mutts. As long as they have a muzzle, warning sign on the premises, uh, laws, you know, vaccinated, all the other stuff, fines, penalties. Uh, it's, it's very overwhelming in, in dog culture. Um, I may have read this in the last episode um, where... Parts of Canada, again, they want a, a national adaptive strategy for their their dogs. Really, it's for their dogs. Obviously, you know, it could be for pets, cats, etc. But end of the day, like you see in this picture, it, it's about the dogs. It's about the dogs. So, again, they're, they're, you know, enticing and talking about having a plan that will... You know, in case of an emergency, weather, whatever, their worthless mutts will be protected as well. Um, again, these things are worthless, they're dangerous, and we're going to do our best to save these things. But in return, they're going to attack and torment us. So that's something that just doesn't um, make sense. He said Canadians should not have to choose between their safety and their lives of their pets. Currently, communities are faced with the financial and the logistical burden of saving their pets in time of crisis. We've heard many stories, many, many stories of dog nutters, whether it's a fire, storm, flood, or river, uh, willing to risk their lives. Willing to risk their lives to save their worthless money. And in the end, a lot of them do die in the process. So they're, they're willing to die for their worthless months. Um, during evacuation, limited resources are available, forcing pet families to chew between pets or an exorbitant cost to save them. Again, it's all about these worthless months. All about these worthless ones. And how about this one? 
The worst I've seen, abandoned dogs on the mend after extensive vet care. Um, two dogs are recovering after being found abandoned by their owners in Cambridge last week. Both animals were discovered on a rough shape with one black dog being found tied up and, and covered in maggots. The other dog was running in the streets with large lacerations on its neck. Um, the dogs were transferred to the vet hospital and are currently recovering. Um, finding a again, finding dogs abandoned is not uncommon for the Humane Society, but these two cases are the worst that she's seen. Um, again. Yeah, so we found these two worthless smuts abandoned. And this again, it, it confirms the name of the cha of, of the show, Worthless Mutts. Confirms that these dogs are worthless. They cannot survive on their own. Yet again, we have to have these dog nutters to go and save them and then go ask a, another dog nut to look after them because these dogs are worthless. Here they have a chance to live out in the wild and they fail nevertheless. You know, these... <clears throat> they're, they're, they and they they mention that it's it's not uncommon to find dogs abandoned. These are man's best friends, things that are harmless, perfect, great, loyal, all that crap. But yet it's so common to find them abandoned in the streets, out in the woods, out in the parks. And yet these things have a chance to prove me wrong, while well, prove me wrong to survive. Every time they show that they can't survive, and it's because they're worthless. And you're gonna have dog nutters, you know, you know, um, argue and say dogs are not worthless. But you're always owning them. You always have to train them. Always have to. They, have, they always need a forever home. When they're on the they're when they're on the street or they're abandoned, you don't just look the other way and think, hey, these things can take care of themselves. No, you go and capture them. And you call them rescue dogs. Then you plead for someone else to come and either foster these worthless mutts. You plead for volunteers to look after these worthless mutts. And you plead for an owner to take them to have a forever home. Because their forever home is not in the trees. It's not in the mountains. It's not in the valley. Not in the fields. Their forever home is, is being worthless <laughs> pretty much. That's, that's their forever home. Their forever home is, is really being worthless. That's their home. Because these things really don't have a home. They don't make a home. They're just they're just placed in a in a in a in a structure. And and, and a lot of dogs must think these dogs are, are are you know competent. The dog nuts will praise a dog for just living in a home. Dog nuts will praise a dog because it's living in a home. The dog did not make the home. The dog did not fight for to, to get to that home. The dog was taken, paid for, and placed in the home. And now, by law, these things have to stay in the home. Because these things were found out, found in the wild, found in, in the public, out in the streets. And guess what? People have to go and rescue them and put them back into someone's home. They're not going to put these things back out in the wild, in the desert, in the wilderness. They're not going to do that because, again, dogs are worthless. That's the name of the channel. To let you know how worthless, pathetic dogs are. They're pathetic. They're worthless they're just the worst. And here we go. About 450 dogs are in Toronto's dangerous dogs registry. With severe maulings in the news, what are the solutions? While these dangerous dogs are allowed to remain in our community, 
we have all these other animals that are banned or illegal to own but somehow it's okay for over 450 of these dogs to remain in our community whether or not they have attacked and or killed someone they're allowed to stay in our communities to terrorize people over and over but somehow if you if you find someone with a hyena they'll be all over that in, in seconds if you find someone with a hairs hairs with a pikas i'm not sure what that is i think it's kind of like a mouse uh pikachu yeah i get it now um that's some of these things can probably get taken away from you but you know having 450 dangerous dogs leaving living near you that that's fine though apparently that's okay it's okay because again they're dogs somehow it's just, it's just dogs again they get a pass they get a free pass with everything they do mauling terrorizing people probably damage they they always get a pass dogs can never do any wrong even even if a dog actually does the wrong a dog can't do wrong they say the dog can't blame the dog got to blame the owner uh, again, dogs again somehow they just can never do any wrong but they can do a lot of right they can do a lot of right even if their owner doesn't tell them to do something if the dog does something that's right you know positive whatever they're gonna praise the dog for that they don't praise the owner they don't, they don't give a they don't even say thank you to the owner they don't even give you your welcome owner to the owner they don't give that none of that they say good dog the dog is good you know great dog they they compliment the dog but as soon as that dog decides to attack on its own not the dog's fault blame the owner again this only happens with dogs dogs not cats not horses it's only with dogs and that's a good another thing with, with horses this is what i think when a horse is go a little rogue or, or untamed or whatever and a horse does something bad they're gonna blame the horse they're gonna punish the horse and say hey we cannot ride this horse this horse has to go they're not gonna blame the rider they're not gonna blame the owner or whatever they're gonna blame and look at the horse as this too dangerous and be like this is a bad horse this horse, this horse cannot be trained cats are probably have it the worst a lot of dog lovers hate cats. They they can say this and that about cats. Cats attack this. Cats are this. But they never say it's not the cat's fault. Only when it comes to dogs, it's not the dog's fault. But if a cat does something, it's not the cat's fault. It's 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 when the, sorry when the cat does something, they say it's the cat's fault. Again, it's just all about protecting these worthless ones. Um. Yeah, and, and again, they, they're asking, what are the solutions? Um, um, it, it's, it's simple. We get rid of these dogs. We get rid of them. Destroy them. I mean, if something is bothering you, you either get rid of it or you walk away from it. When dogs are, 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 are bothering you, you can't just walk away or that thing is going to follow you and still attack you. So you have to get rid of the dog. Can't trust these owners. Can't trust them. Can't trust them. There, there are over 2,000 search requests relating to dangerous dogs in 2023 up from... 2,653 in 2022. So these stat, dog attack stats, dangerous dog stats are always going up higher and higher every year. Every year. And they're asking, what's the solution? Again, these are smart people. They're, these people are not dumb. Even though they're dog nutters, they're not really dumb per se. They're dumb in the in the sense of their dog nutters dumb. They're dumb in the sense that they love dogs dumb. 
They're dumb enough to, to put their lives, their children's lives, and their people's lives at risk for owning certain dogs. That's how they're that's how dumb they are. And you just don't get it. I was gonna say something else I just completely forgot. But anyways, again, yeah, the solution. Again, the solution is get rid of dogs. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Simple as that. Um Again, as we as we spoke about, what's the solution? We spoke about what's the solution. This article's from twenty seventeen. We've we've so they had at least like eight years, eight seven years. Eight, seven years to figure something out, and they and they still fail uh, again and again, and they still don't get it. And and this, it's like you you're again. I know, like I know. I know all these. I know these dog nuts are aware. Like I would say, most of them. They know dogs are dangerous. I know the the politicians know that dogs are highly dangerous. They know. Some will play dumb. Some will actually actually be dumb in terms of dog attacks. But they know. They know all they have to do is get rid of them, and, and there'll be less attacks. But they'll come with articles like this, act like they they care. And you know, go over attacks and stats like that as if they care. But we fast forward again, 2024. What are the solutions? Well, you know, we've been going through this not even just eight years, this has been going on since at least I want to say 2003, 2005, when they started banning pit bulls or supposedly banning pit bulls. We have all, we had all this time, and I'm pretty sure Canada. Looks at what the states are doing. I'm pretty sure these politicians look what the states are doing. These politicians know what thing, what, what the what the 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 politics in uh, the UK are doing with these dogs. They're aware of these things. But again, they they want to protect these dogs. They want to protect these dogs. And and it's just again, it's it's dog nuttery. That's that's what it comes down to. Dog nuttery. Um, we did speak about banned animals that are um, not allowed in Toronto and or Ontario. Uh, we're not we're not allowed to own. I would say not allowed to own them as like pets. <laughs> but there's a list of banned breeds in Canada, so. Uh, in Manitoba, we have the the typical pit bull ter- terrorizer, the American Staffire terrorizer, the Staffire bull terrorizer. Ontario, pretty much the same thing. A lot of terrorizers, and that's. Like that's it. <laughs> that's that's it. In, in all of in all of Canada, that's all what's banned. And see, the, these things were banned in twenty twenty five. Sorry, twenty thousand and five. Sorry, and they still don't know. They still are acting so dumb. Like, what are the solution? You have a ban in place because you know these things are dangerous, but you still allow them in to to, to live here. Attacks still happen, not just in Canada but worldwide. You just can't, you know, continue to act dumb again and again when it comes to these dogs. Because I know a lot of them do know what's going on. They know what the solution is. They know what the solution is. Because every year, every day, all the time, they're they're just pleading to these dog owners to take care of their dogs. They plead to them, please take care of them. Maybe not directly, 
but they're pleading to them, just take care of the dog. They, they're always, again, putting their hand, their, their, their lives in the hands of these um, dog owners. And it's the same result again and again, year out, year in, and they will come back with articles similar to this, asking or saying, oh, dog attacks are on the rise, what do we do? So many articles like this. So many articles like this, and it's this, and we end up in the with the same result over and over again. All right, we're gonna. Um, let them go over this story and see what's going on. I just gotta watch this ad. Take 30 seconds. Sorry, it's just... Just last month, this park was the site of a vicious off-leash dog attack that left a nine-year-old with life-altering injuries. And now the city says it's cracking down on owners of dangerous dogs. Starting today and for the next month, city staff will visit more than 370 owners of dogs under a dangerous dog order to ensure they're in compliance with requirements. These dog owners will get a standardized sign. Sorry, so, so again, they... Okay, that, that just gives them enough time to, again, for these dog owners to put up a show. Act as if they care about the dog. Act as if you know, they're good owners, they're, they're, they want to keep their dog safe, they want to keep everyone else safe. They're going to act like that for, for a brief time. They're going to get things up today when up, but as soon as the police leave or whoever leaves, they, they just transform back into their um, dog, nut, dog nut self that must be visibly posted on their property and they will be required to have their dogs muzzled in public, obtain a dangerous dog tag, give socialization and training to their dogs and refrain from using off-leash dog areas. Now these enforcement actions come after City Council approved new measures last month following an, in an increase in dog attacks since 2022, including the serious mauling of a woman at a bus station in Rexdale in February and as I mentioned earlier, the mauling of a young boy here in this park both incidents involving dogs that were already under a dangerous dog order. I think it's a good idea because, um, like, people, like there's been history of it, right, in the recent times. So, if they get to crack down on it, because it's not really the dog's fault; it's the way people treat the oh, animal. I think it's important my because my goodness, already off the get go, why, why would you say that? It's not the dog's fault. How people treat the, come on. That's just nonsense. So you're telling me that the owner treats a dog bad or whatever. They take the dog to a park and that dog attacks someone else. Even though the owner looks after the dog and loves the dog. But then that dog or hates the dog, whatever the case may be, then that dog attacks someone else. That's immediately the owner's fault. The dog can't take blame for that. I'm sorry, man. It, it is just... God, it's, it's frustrating hearing that type of talk. Not the dog's fault. Not the dog's fault for, for attacking and being aggressive. But that's what dogs do. But it's not their fault. So they, so they need owners to, to train them to not be aggressive. So, so that means I'm right. Their natural state is repulsive. The natural state is so bad that they need someone to train the their 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 disgusting natural state so they don't attack someone. And if they do attack someone, it's the owner's fault. 
They, they take this dog to the park who's probably never attacked anyone and immediately attack someone, and that's the owner's fault. Even though the, the, they've been on walks year, two years, for two years, no attacks. They've been to parks before, no attacks. And all of a sudden, now the dog attacks someone and it is automatically the owner's fault. Yes, the owner is supposed to be held responsible, but it's the fact that they always say it's not the dog's fault. That's what irks me. But anyways, let them finish. Happened Thirdly. here was a real tragedy. I think that the city can add regulations. It's a good step, but probably number one would be enforcing what they already have on the books. Now, Toronto residents can also now access an online registry of dangerous dogs and find resources on what to do if their pet or they themselves get bitten. I'll send it back to you, Shalima. All right, our Kayla McLean reporting for us tonight. Just nonsense. How do you... How do you... Man... This guy... Uh, God. That's why, that's why I say dog nutters are just so dumb. And this guy is probably intelligent, probably has a university de degree or something like that. A bachelor's, a master's. But as a dog nutter, he's dumb. Dumb. Dangerous dog order. I think it's a good idea because, um, like, peop like there's been history of it, right, in the recent times. So, if they get to crack down on it, because it's not really the dog's fault; it's the way people treat. Not, it's not really the dog's fault. Why do you say not really the dog's fault? Because, because you don't know it's the dog's fault. They know it's what dogs do, but again, they don't want to sound. Like they hate dogs. They don't want to degrade dogs. They don't want to tell the truth about dogs. It's this code in dog culture that even though you, you never probably hear about it, dog nuts already know the code. They know the code. They know what to say. Even though they have never heard these terms before. They never heard of these statements before. But they know what to say word for word <sighs> what is parvo and how can it kill your worthless mutt um again The state uh, says a backyard breeder surrendered four worthless mutts to the rescue after she couldn't sell them. Two of them um, were confirmed to have parvo. Uh, it causes the gastroenterosis that is so bad that it actually dehydrates them and they die from dehydration. The virus attacks dogs. Uh, the gastrointestinal system can damage their heart muscles. She's been working to provide IV fluids and force feed the worthless mutts. So this is a um, another common disease that these worthless mutts get. Um, symptoms is lethargy, depression, loss of lack of appetite, followed by a sudden onset of high fever, vomiting, and diarrhea. Uh, with the first signs of parvo, again, lack of appetite, lethargy, fever. Can a dog survive parvo? Uh, it is possible, it depends on the age, the size, and how sick the worthless mutt is when the owner first seeks care. Is it curable? There is no treatment to kill the virus once it infects the worthless mutt. So basically, these dogs, again, are disease-ridden. This is one of these common viruses that they get. Um... What caused the dog to get parvo? Um, parvo is easily spread by direct contact with infected dogs. 
contact with feces infected dogs have contact with virus contaminated services so basically these dogs you know as we know a lot of them will eat they will eat eat dog poop they, they will eat either other dog poop they'll eat their own dog poop uh, which may or may not be the cause of it um, from infected they can get it but from I guess making contact with infected dogs um, let's see what what are the causes um, again they say the the cause can be through oral contact with infected feces and or contaminated surfaces such as so soil, shoes, dog toys, etc. Uh, again, how can a dog get parvo? Parvo and puppy is caused by the canine by the canine parvo virus. The virus is highly contagious and spreads through direct contact with an infected dog or indirect contact with a contaminated object. Um, your puppy is exposed to this parvo virus every time it sniffs licks or consumes infected feces so these things are always I, I i watch them they're always smelling the ground like they're always that's all they do always smelling around on the ground those is always down on the ground every time i see them being walked their heads are always down smelling so imagine that the other dogs and their whatever you know they're I don't know, their excrements, whether you can see it or not, are on the ground. This dog steps in it, this dog sniffs it, this dog licks it, and boom, your worthless mutt gets parvo. And not only that, again, these things will eat their own shit. They will eat their own crap. They'll eat other dogs' crap. So, again, th these are, <laughs> um, you know, these, these things are just nasty. Yeah, again, dogs are just nasty they're nasty these things do nasty things they get disgusting diseases and um, they just can't um, seem to stay healthy <laughs> they're worthless because they're worthless because they're just they're just naturally disease ridden um, see I'm sorry I'm a little tired right now that's why I'm just so like so out of it in a way um, this is the video captures of dog attack in uh, Sudbury two dog owners are sharing their stories about the recent terrifying attack hopefully it works now it's gonna refresh the page the attack on her eight-month-old Shih Tzu, Max. Is creepy, it happened okay. May 16th in the back laneway yeah. of her home. Her dog was on leash mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. I saw a girl coming down the street with a pit bull on a leash that just looked like a rope, and I could see that she obviously couldn't control the dog. This is video of what Cote says happened next, which was captured on home video surveillance in the lane at Bessie and Jean. <laughs> useless the corner of my eye I see the dog coming charging at me so I pulled my dog up into my arm and the dog came he the pit bull grabbed my arm and my dog fell and then he picked up my dog by the neck <laughs> and he shook my dog so the dog went unconscious she's that's what pit bulls do to, to all their victims they <clears throat> So they latch onto their body part, their neck, use their neck, face, and they, they bite down, shake. They bite, 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 shake. Bite, shake, bite, shake. Suffered injuries <clears throat> to her arm after trying to protect Max. She says police responded 
but not bylaw or animal control that evening. She says the dog responsible has not been located, even though it was followed after the attack to a nearby building. Another dog, Brandy, a 13-year-old Sharpe Beagle mix that was adopted after appearing on CTV's Take Me Home Tuesday, was attacked on May 24 in the same neighborhood. Her owner says Brandy was on leash at the time. Basically saw it coming from across the street. When I did first see it, I knew that it was a big dog and it was a powerful dog and these people couldn't control it. Carpenter Same says dog. the dog mauled Brandy and knocked her over. She was able to wave down a Greater Sudbury police officer who was in the area. Neither bylaw nor animal control responded the afternoon of the attack. How I felt was scared, vulnerable and, excuse me, very, very mad very, very mad that this was happening to my old sweet dog. The women connected after the groomer of both dogs heard about the attacks and put them in touch. In an email, the city confirms the attacks are being actively investigated by bylaw, police and animal control. In the meantime, both dog owners say they're terrified and worried about more dog attacks. I'm worried that a human could be hurt too, another person. Trying to save their dog. Trying to save their dog, because that's what you're gonna do. Versus I'm angry. Okay, it's, it's not just about the dogs, dog nutter. Even though I know your dog nutters, I'm covering the stories. It's not just about your dog that are being attacked. Children, infants, babies, preschoolers, toddlers, teenagers, men, women, senior citizens, they're all being attacked by these dogs. Everywhere you go, they're always being they're always attacking no one is safe with them no one is safe around these dogs and no one is safe around your dogs either because again they carry diseases they're hideous and they may not cause as much damage or be as aggressive as you know the pit bulls or the bully breeds but they, they can cause a lot of damage as well not just through attacking, but through their disease, that the diseases that they have. That we don't have proper animal control. People don't even know how how much in danger they are from dogs like this. Cote says, and this is why, you know, I exist. This is why dog nutry in Canada exists. To to let people know directly that we got to get rid of these dogs. We, we got, and not just that, but we got to realize that even animal control, police, again, there's exception. There's some times where police will actually do their job. But a lot of times, or the police or animal control, they fail. They fail to serve and protect. Whether it's a person getting attacked or whether it's a worthless mutt getting attacked, they will fail. They fail. You, you let them know, hey, there's a dog roaming in our neighborhood. They, they say, okay, we'll be there, or they just say, oh, ignore it. And they don't show up until someone is a, has been attacked or dead. That's how worthless and useless animal control is. That's how worthless and useless some of the, the police are. You report something, and they do nothing about it. And we have to wait till someone dies for them to do something. Enough is enough. These bans don't work. Trusting these owners don't work. Leashes, fines, penalties, muzzles, all that nonsense. It doesn't work. It doesn't. But like always, in dog culture, it doesn't matter if it's the owner, the police, animal control, Judges, lawyers, dog experts, dog trainers, you just got to ignore it. You know, you kind of, you may talk about it, but you ignore it, ignore the problem, and you kind of just hope it doesn't happen to you. And this can happen to anyone, any place, any time. These things don't take breaks. We've read stories of these things attacking 1 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning. Either them attacking outside or inside the house. 
whether it's a dog, a person, again, it doesn't matter. And to keep talking about the, these issues as if, you know, you know, it's like, who cares? Then more attack like this is going to happen. And here we have them, them, these dog nutters, you know, crying for their worthless mutts. They came, they joined forces, crying together, pleading for things to be done. I want that shot where they're together. They're, they've joined forces. Because they've been attacked. Question, where were they before the, these attacks happened? Why were they not speaking up then? And that's another thing. A lot of you dog nuts, I'm talking like the, the, the non pitbull nutters, you don't speak up you don't speak up beforehand. You always speak up after your dog has been attacked. You you people too in general, you always speak up after you've been attacked. Why don't you just do it now before you're attacked? If you speak up, everyone else speaks up, then I believe we have a chance to eliminate these worthless ones. Because we've given these dog nuts, pit bull nutters, a lot of time. A lot of time. It is almost 20 years. 20 years in, in Ontario where there's been a ban on pit bulls. And not a lot has changed even with this so-called ban. Because a lot of these pit bulls, like, like in this video, we see that these pit bull owners are worthless. They're pathetic. 20 years. And yet it's the same result. Day in, day out. These things are supposed to be banned. But here they are with these dingbat owners that have no control over them. You call animal control. You cry on TV pleading for help. But no one cares. But we gotta keep putting our trust into these owners. When their dog, all they do is attack people. Attack even these other worthless mutts. Over and over. But they want us to play ignorant, arrogant. Remember this, like I said, these attacks can happen anywhere. Just like that guy said, it's not the dog's fault. But this dog went onto the property of a school and attacked someone. How is that not the dog's fault? That dog came, it left its own property, went on public property, went on the street, then went on school property and attacked someone. How is that not the dog's fault? How is it not the dog's fault? We're not safe anywhere with these things. We are not safe. It is time for... Did you read it? Only three little... Three, uh, three, um, we have three. Why am I? We have three articles or posts that I want to go over. This was this happened in Toronto. Uh, this bro says, I've been considering whether or not I should publicly share a serious concern and I feel I need to let other parents and the public two days ago my 13 year old granddaughter was walking home on King Street West when she was attacked by a pit bull again this is Toronto uh, Toronto's in Ontario apparently there's a pit bull ban but yet pit bulls still exist in Ontario which doesn't make any sense it was not the first time this has happened the dog jumped at her face head area and because she raised her arm he ended up grabbing her arm she ended up with eight puncture wounds around her wrist along with tingling and numbness she is she has lots of healing to go through 
but she's a she's a trooper with school coming to an end and with the beach getting busier i feel the public need to be aware of this dog so that this doesn't happen to anyone else and it shouldn't just be about just this dog it should be about all dogs all dogs because even if you go to the beach and that dog that attacked you isn't at the beach another dog might be there that you don't know and that dog can still attack you so you gotta be aware of all dogs update yes the police were contacted right away and my granddaughter was treated at the er she's on medication to prevent any infections and she's going to regain full feeling but i but it will take a month or so um probably shouldn't put the address there but uh, but anyways uh, i'm pretty sure it's a it's a bully breed pit bull that um caused the havoc um protecting my dog during unprovoked dog attack Again, in Ontario, I'm based in Ontario and hoping to get some advice. There is a man and his pit bull, massive mixed dog, that are notorious in our neighborhood. Again, not just in Ontario, but around the world where we get complaints like this of one dog, one owner, being a terrorist in the neighborhood. The guy uses one of those real leashes and can barely hang on so this grown man can barely hang on to the leash the dog barks and lunges at every dog walking by even at a great distance the guy seems to enjoy seeing his dog lose its its beep uh, which is not surprising because a lot of dog lunders they they want to see their dogs attack someone they want to see their dogs attack cats squirrels they want to see that they they enjoy watching it happen um, he will stand there and laugh while the dog goes crazy. He drives around the neighborhood slowly with the dog in the passenger seat and the window rolled all the way down so the dog can bark at kids and other dogs on the sidewalk. This guy is a terrorist. He's a terrorist. And, and these are the, the people that I talk about and I, and I always say this, that they're reckless, they're rude. They're disrespectful. They're vile people, dog owners, pit bull nutters. They're vile, disgusting people. And I don't say that just to, to be mean or to be, you know, whatever. But it's true. It is 100% true that they are vile people. Here we have a person who has absorbed this dog owner being reckless. And this is, again, not the first time a dog owner has done this or something like this. This happens a lot with dog owners, especially pit bull owners. Very reckless. Um, um, a couple days ago, we were walking our dog when his dog spotted ours 100 meter, meters away. The dog was in the guy's front yard with no leash or collar. The dog beelined it for our dog, and despite my attempts to block him, he ran past me and latched his jaw into my worthless mutt's neck. Without a collar, I had nothing to grab onto to pull the dog away. It took three adults putting our full weight on the dog's snout to get, to get it to release our dog. Three uh, adults. So the owner, I'm guessing the owner too? Two of these owners and someone else, three adults. And, and, and a lot of these people say dogs need supervision. Need supervision from just an adult. Where a dog is attacking and it's taking three adults. The owner can't even stop it, so the owner is pretty much useless. Useless, useless, useless. Um, the worst mutt didn't have any major injuries. Uh, we came across this guy and his dog on our walk, and he had a big grin on his face. Man, this guy's a devil, man. He's a de he's a devil. This guy's a devil. He is the devil. 
um, purposely changing course to come in our direction. This guy is the devil, man. Yo. Man, I say these things, these people are reckless. They're rude. This guy is a psychopath. He's a psychopath. And yes, is there any risk of, um, of doing so for him to carry a pocket knife to attack the other dog? Um, I'm not going to read all this, but I'll say... In self-defense, I think you would be okay. Self-defense, you'd be fine. Um, I think I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it is in Canada when it comes to dog attacks. In some places or states, um, they do state the dog has to actually be attacking you first before you can actually defend yourself. So the dog would have to be attacking, I think, first. Before you can actually defend yourself. But, you know, who knows? Um, yeah. It says, can I sue over a dog? Uh, can I sue over a dog bite? Can I sue over a dog bite? Uh, live in Ontario, Canada. Working on a country road, locating, locating an underground gas line. Um, that's another thing why I, why I would not want to do construction outside because dogs can be anywhere and everywhere. Um, anyway, long story short, as I was walk, heading back to grab my equipment from the gas meter. Two large dogs ran out from the backyard. One of them bit my hand before they ran back behind the house. I went back to my vehicle, parked across the road, and called my manager and asked him what to do. I was told to wrap my finger with the med kit in the vehicle and go to the hospital to have it checked out. Before I left, I saw someone coming out of the house, so I figured I'd ask if the dogs are vaccinated. I approached the end of the driveway and called her out. The dogs were still outside, I guess out of view. The one who bit me ran up to me, snarling again, but backed off. I held up my bleeding hand and yelled, asking if the dogs were vaccinated because it just bit me. And like always again, <laughs> the dog nut got mad at him for approaching the, pro uh, the property before she could contain the dogs. Typical dog nuttery. I figured, screw this, I'm just going to leave before something gets worse. The dogs weren't leashed or contained by any fence, and from what I remember, there were no beware of dog signs either. Again, this type of stuff happens to a lot of people all over the world uh, it doesn't like there's there's no profession no age no time where you're safe from these things they're, they're just no one is safe and then it's like you you, you have to deal with the dog but then you got to deal with the owner and both are both don't listen and <laughs> like both don't don't listen when a dogs attack and doesn't listen to stop attacking and when you're confronting the owner the owner doesn't want to listen so it's like you know they, they they these dog nuts they do take um certain characteristics from their dogs um yeah
So this person was on their property without their knowledge, I believe. Um, yeah, this person states this stuff, you know, but um, one of the laws or, or the, you know, the way dogs can get off free from dog attacks. So if, if you're on the dog that's property and they have a dog and that dog attacks you, um, you can't sue like you you're you're, you're not going to win as long as you're on their property and you get attacked you can't win obviously there there're probably going to be some exception but in some cases most cases maybe you go onto a dog's property or a dog owner's property and their dog attacks you you cannot win again that's just a loophole to protect these dogs So yeah, um, that's about it for now. I may do a part two. Um, maybe not a part two, but another uh, dog nuttery in uh, the dog nuttery in Canada episode eighteen. Most likely on uh, Canada Day because obviously it's Canada Day, so it's only fitting that I do a video on Canada on Canada Day regarding dogs in Canada. Um, yeah. Um, I think all of us around the world, um, we go through different degrees of, of dog nuttery. It may be the same, but we go through different degrees. Um, I know in the States it can be very rough. The owners can be very aggressive. Um, the owners can just be the worst people of the worst. Well, in Canada, from where I am, again, it's not too bad. Like, it's it's really not that bad. I do see a lot of dogs. I do see pit bulls. Um, I, where I've lived, I've never... Just in, like, my area, I've never heard of anyone getting attacked. Uh, I'm not saying it hasn't happened and they never reported it, but I've never heard of it happening. Um, so I know this is... It based, it, it's... It's just, again, from state to state, city to city, country to country, everything is going to be different. But nevertheless, you know, dog nuttery in Canada does exist. It does exist. And it's getting people hurt. It's getting people killed. And just because, me, just because only one or two, you only get one or two fatalities a year from dog doesn't doesn't mean we can just ignore it. And that's what these dog nutters want. They were they're gonna find any excuse to just play ar arrogant and ignorant to dogs and dog attacks. One death is one too many. One attack is one too many. Five hundred on postal workers is one too many. We need to get these stats down to zero. And they always are talking about what's the solution. Uh, always bring up the dog attack stats and they're just saying the same thing but nothing's really changing and I'm going to say it again I'm always going to keep saying it always going to keep saying it, that what needs to be done is we need to get rid of these worthless months get rid of them from our new neighborhoods and societies get rid of them keep them around people will get hurt someone will get hurt they may not get hurt in, in, the, in that two year span like I said it just takes that one moment that one day someone is attacked and or killed by a dog that's all it takes and even before that you know uh, people report that dogs are terrorizing the neighborhood 
They report that they're 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 worth a small or attack by a by a dog. Animal control police they don't do anything. In, in most some cases they don't do anything. Then we can't we can't we can't even defend ourselves. Because there's that that gray area. Where you can defend yourself, but even if you do defend yourself, it's like. You know, you gotta you gotta investigate and you gotta like explain yourself and like even if you defend yourself, you can still be so you can probably still get in trouble for defending yourself against a dog. And and um and they, and they just do a lot of things to protect these dogs. And one of them again, it's. It's, you know, if, if you're on a dog owner's property and a dog attacks you, that dog can get away with it. So what needs to be happen? What needs to happen is we got to get rid of these dogs. Whether you know, do you want to say it's not the dog's fault? That only that only again proves that dogs are the problem. So, so even if let's say even if it's not the dog's fault, dogs are still attacking. Dogs are still the problem. They're they're the problem here. Again, I'm, I'm not you know allowing dog owners to get away with things. I'm not saying that they don't they're not accountable, but we got to stop looking at at these dogs as fully innocent. As if they can't do any wrong when they're the ones, they're the ones that, that's actually attacking, hurting people. They're the ones attacking their owners. Their owners' children. You're telling me this thing will, this thing will, didn't attack for over two, three years. You get a baby one night, one day or whatever. An infant. You go to sleep. Long story short, that dog attacks the, 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 that infant. And it's not the dog's fault? When for three years you've been training this thing, loving this thing, and what does it do? Goes around to attack a and kill a baby and that's not the dog's fault? Again, like dogs can't be wrong can't, dogs can't do any wrong. They can't do any wrong. It is very disappointing. It's very frustrating. But anyways, I am going to end it there. This is Dog Nuttery in Canada, episode 17. I'm going to close off with uh, the National Anthem. Then close off with the end of my closing uh, logo. And then we're going to call it a video. But anyways... Or the dog butcher. This is go dog butcher with another worthless smuts. And please remember that it's okay to hate dogs. Thank you for watching.